All right, so today we have a different case that we've kind of be going through. Um, we have a person that's coming in following a surgery um, and a significant injury to their right shoulder. So we're actually going to be doing a little bit of an interview and assessment, and then later on we'll do a little bit of a treatment. Uh, we're just going to have a uh, patient here start off by giving us a little bit of a history of what happened to their right shoulder. So back in June, June 8th, I was biking uh, on a climb trail, came off a bridge, uh, fell into the stream basically with a bunch of boulders, dislocated the shoulder and broke part of the socket off. Um, they had to go in about a week and a half later and put in a two inch screw and washers to reattach the uh, portion of this socket that came off. There's a fancy name for it, I don't know it. Um, but after that, I was in the sling for several months and had fairly significant loss of mobility in my shoulder. So after uh, reviewing the x-ray, essentially what happened is the humeral head uh, inferiorly dislocated out of the glenohumeral joint, plus the bottom of the glenoid cavity broke away. Um, so there was a fracture and a dislocation, most likely from a direct impact into the side of the shoulder, which then dropped the humerus inferiorly. Um, so they would have had to have relocated it. And then with this surgical scar that you see kind of along the front of the shoulder here, um, this is where they went in to the area and they put some hardware into the shoulder. So they put a screw and some washers um, to try to stabilize the glenohumeral joint back up. And the reason why the person has come in today um, during the rehabilitation program, essentially they now have what's called frozen shoulder. So that joint capsule, because of the damage, the joint itself has started to just seize and tighten up. So the glenohumeral capsule itself is now significantly limiting range of motion. So we're no longer treating a person who is at a risk of a additional humeral dislocation. We're now treating the adhesions and the scar tissue in and around the shoulder. Um, now I am going to move your shirt out of the way just a little bit if you're okay with that. So I also just wanted to point out um, there is an additional scar. So we have a newer scar which has happened this year plus we have a older scar from a fractured clavicle in a history. So this one is old versus the one that we're going to be looking a little bit closer at is this one here which is the newer one. So what we're going to start off with today um, is one of the easiest assessments. So now that we have a brief history, we will do a little bit of palpation later on, but what we're going to start off with is some range of motion. And just to speed up this process, essentially, uh, we're going to focus more on the right affected one instead of a complete bilateral, but at times, especially to do with the capsular mobility, I am going to have them be doing a bilateral assessment. So what you're going to do is I'm going to stand in front of you out of the camera screen and you're going to try to mimic the movement that I'm going to do just off screen. If you wouldn't mind doing that with yourself. Okay. So the first one here is flexion. If you could just raise your arm up as straight as you can in front of you and go as about as high as you can go. Good. And at the top of that, what are you feeling when your arm gets to this point? Pain and tightness through right here. Okay, some pain and some tightness. So yeah. it's not a weakness, but it just feels like you can't go any higher yeah. than that. But it feels like it's getting jammed up. It's just, it can't move further. Perfect. And bring your arm down. And so the second one we're going to have you do, you can bend your elbow a little bit, but just try to bring your elbow behind your back a little bit. So this is into extension. And we can see a very good amount of range of motion. So clearly extension isn't too limited, but flexion definitely was. Okay, we'll bring your arm back to your side. Um, because of the capsular pattern of restriction, we've done flexion extension, and now we're gonna be looking at adduction and abduction and leaving the rotations for last. So this next one, essentially, if you can try to bring your arm just across your body like so, okay? And then we'll bring it up to about a 90 degree, and again, try to bring your arm across your body. So this being horizontal and adduction, again, both of those are pretty good, where you're able to touch your other shoulder with your hand, so a little bit of a limitation in here. Uh, it looks like it's tight at the end range, but he is able to do most of that. This last one, again, just as far as you can, try not to tilt your body too much, but just bring your arm as close as you can in a plane above your head. Out to the side? Or? Yeah, out to the side. Good. So the one thing we have to look out for is a lot of times what you will see is a person starts to compensate by basically, and 
gonna slightly push you over a little bit. They start to tilt their whole body to the side. So if we try to keep him maintained neutral, so we see a significant decrease in his abduction. If you wouldn't mind, um, we're gonna have you do both arms at the same time as if you're reaching for something up above your head. So we can see it's pretty easy on this left one, full above, hits the fan above us. However, on uh, the right hand side, the arm is going further into flexion because he's unable to get it fully in the pure abduction range. You can bring that back down. Okay, for this last two, essentially you're gonna bring your arms out like so. And we're gonna go through internal rotation first. So very gently, we're gonna do a bilateral comparison. Try to bring your hands down for us. So again, nice range of motion. Getting close to full here on the left one. However, on the right one, we can see a significant loss in his internal rotation. And we will go in the opposite direction. So again, starting from around 90, good. So we're seeing almost again, closer to full, not quite on the left. And again, a significantly reduced external rotation on this opposite side. So I'm gonna come in from the side here. We're gonna bring his arm back down into this neutral plane. We'll just focus on just this one. You can bring this one down. So again, the hardest ranges of motion with a capsular restriction is external rotation and abduction, and then followed by internal. So this being one of the hardest ranges for that shoulder to do. And again, at this end range, what are you feeling right now as we kind of like ask you to do that movement? This one, it's just tight. It's jamming up, can't go further. Okay, so again, not really pain at this moment? No, no pain at this moment. Okay, great. And then if we went into that bottom one, what do you feel at the end of this? Tightness again and just it's jamming up and can't go further. Okay, so if you followed through your capsular pattern, good, and you can bring your arm to your side, uh, in a frozen shoulder, which is essentially what we're seeing now in this chronic state, um, it's no longer inflamed, so he does not have pain limiting his range of motion. It's more of an end tightness, which typically we'll see a capsular pattern. So you see limitations on internal, external, and abduction, and it's not pain limiting. He also is not complaining in any part of that, and you didn't see any facial expression of him giving you a ouch or a, I don't want to go any further, which means we're not getting any pain limited ranges of motion or no fear of him wanting thinking that shoulder is going to pop out again. So there's no apprehension as we would call it, which is a good sign that we can go in there and start manipulating the shoulder and trying to increase the capsular mobility without a risk of it dislocating again. Again, obviously he's had surgery and so they put hardware into the shoulder to stop that from occurring again. So really now we're going to be looking at how restrictive is this scar tissue but then deep with inside the glenohumeral capsule itself, obviously the screw plus the scar tissue deep in the shoulder, it's really what's limiting his range of motion at this point. All right, so we're gonna be going into an assessment skin to skin here. Uh, so we have our client shirt off, supine on the table. We're taking a look um, in the skin as well as the scar tissue around this area. We're going to be doing a little bit of four T's. So starting off with a very gentle palpation. The area is warm. It is not specifically cold on his scar tissue. So that's really good. We're going to go into how the skin is kind of moving. I'm going to do a nice close-up on this scar. I want to see if the skin itself. So we can see if I'm pulling this way. It's got some good mobility through his pec. But when we go like right on the actual scar itself, it doesn't want to move quite the same. It feels like it's puckering a little bit, especially towards the top. Um, the bottom moves pretty good. From the old scar, again, that tissue seems to be moving a little bit of a restriction across the top, where again it's puckered and dropped down on his clavicle. So skin mobility a little bit. Let's try doing a little bit of a picking up. So I'm going to Kind of on the borderline of that skin rolling, just try to approximate the tissue and lift it and move it back and forth. So that's pretty good. However, definitely a little bit of restriction. And just outside of the camera view, the body's giving me a little bit of a look, as in it's a little bit sensitive, especially down towards the bottom, but towards this top, it doesn't feel as bad. So it's interesting that we have a little bit of movement restriction, but definitely in the lower part, um, we have a little bit more of the sensitive, what I would assume, down in this part here. So definitely this scar is causing an effect on some of the surrounding tissue. Uh, into muscle tone, 
palpation of pectoralis major minor and deltoid anterior head to kind of start um, so the deltoid itself actually looks a little bit atrophied and flat um, just taking a look from previous bilateral um, and due to kind of impact on the area and the fact that he hasn't been using abduction as much this is definitely not a large muscle at the moment so we have some decrease in size um, the pectoralis muscle itself feels not too bad however there's definitely some ropey bands so especially down in this lower part in here I can feel some ropiness to it but once you push through it there's actually quite a bit of tension from pectoralis minor so coming up towards that coracoid process that feels really hypertoned as I'm pushing through his pectoralis major so that's something we're going to need to investigate a little bit closer palpating off the bottom of the coracoid process so right in here being the coracoid towards the bottom a distinct tightness from pec minor and as well as into coracobrachialis and the short head of biceps. So this is definitely another area that we're going to have to take a look at is the two muscle attachments off that inferior coracoid running down. Let's see what else we can feel. Go towards his upper trapezius right away. This feels a little bit dense towards its clavicle acromion attachment in here. It's moving quite nice for the most part. So, um, and I'm just gonna do a little bit of a squeeze. Do we get any sensitivity from uh, you with this one? No. Not so bad with that? Okay, good. Thanks for the assist moving the pillow out of the way. So along the spine of the scapula, again, it's almost like a little bit of an indentation and it's quite pliable when I push in here, showing again some atrophy to that posterior deltoid um, as well as into that triceps. It's not as hypertone in this area. So we're seeing quite a bit of tension in the front on the deeper muscle tissue, but the external rotators as well as the abductors are all a little decrease in size. Uh, temperature again, it's been pretty good all around, no significant differences. Let's go down his arm a little bit. So I'm gonna move your arm out to the side. So we're gonna palpate on the top for biceps brachii. That tone feels pretty good. Can I give you just a little bit of a resistance? Just pull for me, good. So getting him to activate, kind of splitting the heads. So we have the shorter head, the more medial head of biceps in here. So it's got some good tone to it. Again, it feels, because he's contracting it quite tight, which is okay. And then that long head, I'm gonna follow it up, relax for me. And this time I'm gonna strum the tendon. So this might get a little bit uncomfortable. There we go. So here's that tendon, it's quite tight. And I'm not using a lot of pressure and I'm getting a lot of snap out of it, which shows us that's probably gonna be adhered. And how does that feel as I'm kind of going across that? Just be honest with me on that one. Uh, it's not super painful, but it doesn't feel great. doesn't feel great. Okay. So we'll go back. That could be, again, because it's going right up past our scarring, so it was probably affected with inside of it. I'm going to bring your arm out to the side. I know you have some limited in your external rotation. So right away, I just want you to take a look at this. If I'm holding him, I'm doing a little P-ROM in this area. He's already giving me some resistance which is okay. So I can feel him giving me some resistance. I have a little bit of apprehension. Um, and then we get to a point right here where there is no more ROM. So when he was sitting up, he had more external rotation, but now that I have his shoulder planted on the table, I'm using a decent amount of pressure here and that shoulder does not want to externally rotate. So we see a significant loss in P-ROM for his external rotation. And I'm gonna take this towards me and go into internal rotation. His whole scapula is wanting to move here um, instead of just the GH itself. And again, we've maxed out the internal rotation. Bring it up to neutral again. So you can actually see the whole shoulder complex wanting to lift up, showing us that the movement happening with inside the glenohumeral joint isn't happening. He's almost getting more protraction of that 
shoulder coming forward, which could be why that pectoralis minor is so tight, as it's trying to assist the movement. So and again, a gentle back and forth here. We are kind of seeing the limitations of the rotation. There's the external and there's the internal, um, which is one of the you know main concerns of somebody coming in with frozen shoulder is that significant loss. So we've looked at biceps, we've looked a little bit at corico. Last thing I'm gonna do is go into his subscapularis. So I'm gonna open him up a little bit here. We have the outer edge of pectoralis major right above my fingertips. We have latissimus dorsi and teres major below. I'm gonna place my fingertips inside the subscapular fossa. I'm gonna take away the view of the camera for a second here as I place this in, and I'm gonna sink into a subscapular fossa right away. This muscle feels quite ropey. He's giving me a little bit of a flinchy face, which tells me it's probably a little bit sensitive where my fingertips are. Can you gently push your palm down towards your abdomen? I'm sorry, yeah, great, and relax. So I can, I know I'm on subscapularis with my fingertip here. Let's do that one more time. And how does that feel when we do that? Uh, it hurts. That hurts. Okay. So again, we have a pretty sensitive muscle. I'm feeling some nodules and some ropey bands in there. So this is definitely one of the muscles also that we're wanting to work on. Uh, one thing to keep in mind that when a person is um, recovering from a dislocated shoulder, one of the things that they will do is put you in a slinged position like so, and they often want to elevate the shoulder up a little bit with the sling. So that means this arm spends, you know, weeks in a internally rotated position with no ability to do a lot of abduction. Um, and some of those internal rotators will shorten. So those are some of the palpations that I've kind of looked at. We looked at the front of the shoulder, the outside of the shoulder, the back of the shoulder, and inside um, for lats, teres, and subscapularis. And we're seeing a lot of the tension more on the internal side of it. So that's gonna conclude our palpation of the shoulder, and then we will come back for some treatment.